The transition to Industry 4.0 and the introduction of new digital technologies are evoking some profound changes in industrial and manufacturing company work systems. And many researchers are estimating that these changes will affect both the overall system performance and human well-being. However, currently there is a lack of descriptive empirical evidence focusing on the pertaining effects of these emerging changes. And without the support of such empirical evidence, it will be very challenging to provide uh, prescriptive actions for how industrial companies might navigate through this transition to Industry 4.0. Welcome to HDO and Beyond. Uh, today's episode is part of a three-episode series where I will uh, where I will share some research results on how the introduction of new digital technologies in industrial and manufacturing work systems can affect uh, human well-being and overall system performance before, during, and after the implementation. In this episode, I'm going to specifically focus on the before phase. Uh, the before phase is this initial phase where a company might have decided to invest and possibly has chosen some new digital technologies, but has yet started the implementation process. My name is Bijran Kadir, and I am a PhD student in the Engineering Systems Design Group at the Department of Management at the Technical University of Denmark. And my PhD project has the title Designing New Ways of Working in Industry 4.0. And for the past couple of years, I have conducted several industrial case studies with the aim of understanding how industrial companies can align human technology and organization in the transition to Industry 4.0. So uh, in our latest research article, which was published in the International Journal of Industrial Ergonomics, uh, my co-author, Associate Pro Professor Ole Bobe and I, we presented uh, the findings uh, from these case studies. The purpose of this article was to try and highlight how human well-being and overall system performance is affected in the transition to Industry 4.0. And it is actually also these findings that I'm going to present in this three-episode series of the podcast. Uh, we collected the main bulk of the empirical data through 10 explorative case studies uh, in 10 different industrial companies, which were all located in Denmark. And we interviewed our 35 employees uh, in total. And the majority of the case studies, they were large enterprises, but a few of them were SMEs. And the employees we interviewed, they ranged from executive managers to shop floor operators who were working with these uh, digital technologies. As I mentioned at the beginning, this kind of empirical data is very rare in the context of Industry 4.0 uh, and the transition to Industry 4.0. Uh, and these findings are rare because until now, the majority of academic research within this field has, for the most part, either focused on prescriptive concept uh, conceptual frameworks and methods uh, that really haven't been validated in industrial settings, or on developing and testing standalone solutions in isolated industrial or laboratory settings. I truly believe that before we can develop any prescriptive measure measures uh, for how companies and organizations can deal with the implementation of Industry 4.0 enabled solutions and technologies, we really need to have a solid foundation of descriptive data, which is also necessary if, uh, if we want to understand the current situation, its challenges, and opportunities. And this, limitation, and this limited research uh, focus was the main driver of our research article. Uh, it is no secret that most industrial companies are far from what we usually would consider as Industry 4.0. But at the same time, a lot of companies have started experimenting and using new digital technologies to some extent and are therefore in this transitional phase in their journey towards Industry 4.0. And in other words, uh, uh, as in any other transition, uh, there will be and there are a lot of changes, which might ultimately either positively or negatively affect uh, both human well-being and overall system performance. Okay, uh, so I want to start off by talking about how human well-being can change in this before phase as i just described so let's look uh, start by looking at the positive effects the positive side of the the positive effects on human well-being in this before phase so the first effect the po first positive effect on human well-being was that 
the workers, they like being informed and engaged by the management on the upcoming changes related to digital uh, digitalization and digital technologies. And this was true for the majority of the operational level workers that we were talking to, that we talked to. And these workers mentioned that they really appreciated being informed by uh, being informed by their management on the um, uh, on the upcoming changes. So it really seems that the level of information and engagement by the management team play a essential role in how the workers perceive the upcoming changes which are introduced by new di- these new digital technologies. So the second positive effect on human well-being was that the workers generally uh, are excited about working with these new digital technologies. Uh, when we were talking with the operational level workers, almost all of them mentioned that they initially res- uh, when they initially received the news regarding the company's investment in these new digital technologies, they actually got very excited and looked forward to working with and using these new digital technologies. And uh, this excitement was especially apparent in the cases uh, where we were where there was tangible technology present, such as industrial robots, collaborative robots, uh, cobots and automated guided vehicles, AGVs. Uh, we actually had several workers mentioning that after they he- uh, heard about, uh, they heard about uh, their company was getting one of these technologies, they immediately started uh, using their own spare time to look, uh, uh, watch videos online and read articles about these new digital technologies just to gain more information of what they, their abilities were and what they could not do. And if you haven't really, if you haven't already made the conclusion, I already guessed it, that these workers uh, who did this were mostly younger workers that were somewhere in their mid-20s or somewhere in their 20s. The third positive effect on human well-being was the workers, they, were, they, they had looked forward to learning new skills and compet- uh, competences um, with these new digital technologies. So the several workers expressed that they actually very much like the idea of having to learn new digital uh, new skills and competences. And while some of the workers they believed that the new skills they were learning and gaining uh, could help them perform better in their current job, others viewed it as uh, as an opportunity to grow and possibly improve their job profile in case. Uh, of future hirings outside of their company. So these were some of the more relevant positive effects on human well-being in the before phase. Now let's have a look at some of the negative effects on human well-being. The first negative effect on human well-being was that the workers were worried about working with these working with uh, these new digital technologies. So the information on the upcoming uh, implementation of new digital technologies can also lead to uncertainties that can have negative effect on human well-being. Uh, just before, I mentioned that some of the workers were excited to, about working with these new digital technologies. However, we also experienced that others um, found it to be worrying. And actually, several uh, of the interviewed uh, workers explicitly expressed that they initially were worried about working with the new digital technologies. And the majority mentioned that they had at least one colleague uh, or that, uh, who had been very worried. The second negative effect on human well-being was uh, the workers, they started questioning their own skills and competences, their current skills and competences. Uh, and just like the previous effect, uh, the need for new skills and competences were perceived differently by different workers. Uh, while most of the workers we interviewed, uh, they perceived the possibility to gain new knowledge and learn new skills um, in a positive way. Uh, and we had several expressing that they also had, but we also had several that, that expressed that they also had feared that they would not be able to keep up uh, with the new requirements that were demanded of them. And some of the workers had feared that they would not be able to keep up uh, working with the new digital technologies, while others had feared that they would not have the capacity to learn any new skills and competences. I think it's also relevant to mention that several of the decision makers and the workers across the 10 uh, case studies, they all highlighted that it was mostly employees that were above uh, 45 uh, years old that had this fear. This is what we call the aging group. And actually, all of the 
workers in this age group that we interviewed, uh, they also um, uh, had experienced this fear to a certain degree. This is what they mentioned. And the third negative effect on human well-being was that the workers feared that they would have to work faster. Uh, the workers, they, uh, the workers questioning their own skills and competences. It became becomes even more uh, prominent if the decision makers they promote the new digital technologies as performance improving tools. In fact, uh, this defi- definition puts a lot of pressure on the workers even before they have started working with the new digital technologies. This is exactly what we experienced when we were interviewing these workers. And some of the case companies had experienced that the workers, they had actually directly uh, expressed uh, their lack of enthusiasm to work in new ways if it meant that they had to work faster or increase the number of outputs. Uh, one of the companies uh, which had removed papers in, uh, in a work system and implemented a digital workflow Uh, Prior to the implementation, several workers had threatened to quit and leave the company if the output of the work system uh, produced would have increased. Uh, And this was because the workers, uh, they already felt that they were working at their maximum capacity and feared that their management team was actually using this uh, digitalization and transition as a mean or as an excuse to make the workers work even faster. The fourth negative effect on human well-being was uh, that the workers, they were uh, worried about their health and safety. When workers, they initially hear about new digital technologies such as robots, AGVs, some tend to uh, become worried about their personal health and safety. Uh, And this is because uh, of the technology's uh, autonomous nature and ability to share the same physical workspace as the workers. So now they have to work with a technology that can room freely and autonomously and that they don't have any control over. And the majority of the workers who had experience working with these tangible technologies mentioned that before working with the new technologies, they were actually worried about being hit and getting hurt uh, while working with these uh, digital technologies. And to overcome this fear, actually, one of the case companies, uh, they mentioned that they had made the experience of getting hit by a collaborative robot, uh, a cobot, a mandatory part of the training uh, that the workers had to go through before they could start working with these collaborative robots. So if you had to work with them, you had the experience of being hit by one of them. The fifth and last negative effect on human well-being was... uh, in the before phase, was that some workers, they feared that they would lose their job. Knowing that their company had decided uh, to invest in new digital technologies and combined with the uncertainty um, uh, that I have just mentioned, some of the workers had become worried that uh, their future uh, at their company might be not that bright and they might end up getting fired. And this is initially when they heard about the initiative of digitalization and new digital technologies and their company. And while few of the workers we interviewed actually mentioned uh, that they had fear for the job, all of them said that they at least knew of uh, one worker that had been very worried about getting fired. So they had at least one colleague that had feared for their jobs. One of the companies had invested in a very elaborative AGV system, and several of the forklift drivers uh, had quit their jobs right after uh, the management team had informed them about the investment. Uh, And apparently these drivers were afraid that uh, they soon would get fired anyways uh, and had decided that it would be best for for them to leave uh, the company on their own terms. And with that, we have gone. uh, We have covered how human well-being changes before the implementation of new digital technologies in the transition to 54.0. Now let's move on to see how overall system performance uh, change in this phase. As we did with the human well-being part, uh, I'm going to start by looking at the positive effects first before going on to the negative one. The first positive effect on human uh, on system performance was that the companies assumed that new digital technologies will increase competitiveness and help them with meeting increasing customer demands. The majority of the decision makers we interviewed agreed that their transition to Industry 4.0 was driven by performance-related factors and that by investing in new digital technologies, they would actually be 
uh, able to increase their competitiveness and achieve a better market position. I think what is really interesting is how the decision makers at the SMEs uh, viewed the situation. And these decision makers, uh, they felt that investing in new digital technologies was a necessity that they had uh, if they had... uh, if they wanted to have any chance of competing and surviving as a company. So uh, the digitalization was very much driven by that factor. We want to digitalize because we want to survive. If we don't do this, we're not going to be able to survive. The second positive effect on system performance was the companies assumed that informing, uh, informing and involving the workers will reduce resistance to the upcoming changes. Again, we come back to the importance of information exchange regarding the, uh, the the upcoming changes. So the majority of the decision makers believe that informing and involving the workers in the upcoming changes would actually reduce organizational friction and ease the transition, uh, their transition to Industry 4.0 and the implementation of new digital technologies. They also believe that this information sharing had a positive effect on the performance uh, of the new implemented digital solutions. I think it is also important to mention that the majority of the companies had relied heavily on the workers to come up with the ideas for how uh, they could use new digital technologies at their companies. Uh, uh, In fact, in one of the large companies that we had in our case studies, uh, the senior management team had started an internal competition within the company where they had looked for innovative ideas using uh, for using additive manufacturing technologies. And the workers and departments with the best ideas uh, had received a small 3D printer, which then the, what they then could use uh, to test their ideas. Uh, and uh, as one of the guys we interviewed mentioned that in 12 months, the management team uh, had in total distributed around 35 3D printers and this initiative has been uh, had been received so well by the organization that uh, the specific company had actually created a new department that only focused on servicing the other departments within the company with 3D printed prototypes uh, of components and products. The third positive effect on system performance was that companies assumed that involving the workers in the des- design process will increase the success rate of the performance of the final developed solution. So several of the decision makers mentioned that uh, involving the workers early on in the designing, the redesigning of the work system can actually result in better solutions compared to not involving them. Uh, The reason uh, they believed uh, there was notion was that the workers are usually much more familiar with how the different elements of the work uh, system operates and interact with each other. They basically know the ins and outs of the tasks and the processes and the systems um, and, and, and the interaction within the systems. Uh, therefore, it makes really good sense to involve them in this process as early on as possible. However, several of the decision makers and the workers actually uh, also mentioned that it is very, very important to involve the right workers and not just any worker. And the way most described the right worker was someone who had uh, exceptional understanding, uh, they had an, an exceptional understanding of how the work system uh, systems operate and interact with each other, and someone who has the capability to provide construct, uh, constructive feedback and importantly does not have a negative attitude toward changes and new digital technologies. Okay, so now let's have a look at the negative effect uh, on system performance. The first negative effect on system performance was that the decision makers find it challenging to assess organizational maturity. Several decision makers highlighted that they had a really hard time trying to assess their organizational maturity and readiness to adapt to and actually work with the new digital technologies. Uh, One of the companies uh, had previously failed to implement several new digital solutions and technologies because the workers had very limited understanding and technical maturity and had had a hard time getting used to working in the new ways. And to overcome this challenge and to ensure that they did not repeat this mistake uh, again, 
uh, this company had hired an external company, uh, external consultancy company to assess the organizational maturity. Uh, this assessment had also included the identifi- identification of the necessary competences that the company needed to achieve success with the future projects uh, related to uh, in new digital technologies. The second negative effect on system performance was the decision makers, they found it uh, challenging to get all employees to support their digital transformation initiatives. As I mentioned before, informing and involving workers early on can have a positive effect on human well-being and performance. But the decision all uh, all agreed that it uh, but the, the decision makers, they all agreed that it is very essential to get organizational buy-in and reduce organize to and reduce organizational friction. But as they explained, it is very challenging and it is a very demanding task especially if it involved very novel and untested digital technologies where it is very difficult to support claims uh, that the new digital technologies will actually improve the way uh, people work. So it's very hard to say this technology is going to make sure that uh, we can improve, your well-being is going to improve, all of uh, things like that because you don't have the necessary data to back it up because the new t- the technology is so new that not a lot of other companies have tried this out. The third negative effect on system performance was that some workers need training in using simple IT and digital technologies. So while some workers find it very easy to use and work with the new digital technologies, others do not. And several of the decision makers and actually workers we interviewed mentioned that, uh, again, this aging group, uh, they, these aging workers, this group of workers that are above 45, they find it more challenging to work with new digital technologies compared to the younger workers. They believe that this was mainly because uh, these aging workers usually have limited or less experience with the uh, computer you computers in general. And actually one of the SMEs um, had who had several, actually many workers who were above, the majority of the workers were above 45 years old. Uh, And to avoid this challenge, the decision maker, actually the CEO and owner of the company, had decided to provide every worker with training in basic computer use, which had included simple tasks, very, very simple tasks, such as turning on the computer on and off, opening and closing very, very basic computer software programs, etc., uh, yeah, so these were some of the uh, effects on system performance. And in the next episode, I'm going to cover how human well-being and system performance is affected during the implementation of new digital technologies. Uh, I hope you have enjoyed this episode. It is the first episode that I'm really recording. Uh, and uh, please, if you have any comments questions or feedback or interesting in reading the full article with all the description all everything more detailed please do not hesitate to reach out uh, to me either on linkedin or at the uh, bkad at the dtu dtu.dk so uh, thank you for listening